I host a uh, weekly YouTube show on YouTube. Let's look up 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. And today I wanted to talk about classic Amigas again. And I want to talk about using classic Amigas in modern times and, and what we can actually use them for. Now it's been um, 25 years since the last Amiga really rolled off the assembly line. The last classic Amiga. All the fantastic new Amigas of course are getting ready to roll off the assembly line thanks to our friend Trevor. But there's a lot of us out there that really like to use our old machines. Uh, as you know m most people who use our old classic Amigas we hook them up to play video games with which is absolutely fine and uh, I like throwing a game or two in my Amiga every now and again. But what can these things do in our modern times? Well what do we use our computers for? We use them, one hundred, well, most of, mostly to get on the internet, to get on the web and do things on the web. We use them for word processing. We do some occasional spreadsheets on them. And if you're like me, you do a little bit of things like photo editing and uh, maybe taking some pictures and mixing them around and putting them in some of your documents. And believe it or not, our classic Amiga can still do quite a bit of this. Another thing that it's uh, surprisingly useful in doing is audio. We all know that the Amiga's audio chip, the classic Amiga's uh, Paula chip, was fantastic in the day. Did a fantastic job in 1985 through, you know, maybe 91 or so when it started to be surpassed by some of the things the PC could do. But even today, we can wring a lot of power out of that Paula chip and make it do things like. Uh, beautiful mod files and play mp3 files. Now full disclosure, if you pull out your old Amiga 500 and boot it to Workbench 1.3 on a floppy, you're not going to be doing a lot of this. We need to give our Amigas a little bit of extra love to make them to be useful in today's world. My Amiga 1200 this is an original one that I bought from Amiga Kit, maybe 2001, 2002. It was new old, old SCOM stock. And it served me well for many years. I've put a Blizzard 040 card in here, one of the original ones from, uh, I think they, they made those up until maybe 97, 98, 99. Uh, 40 megahertz, so it's got a lot of speed on it. It also gets very hot, which is why I've got these creative little blocks underneath to elevate it. I got a little fan under there to keep it cool. But even using it with a, an 030 card with a decent amount of RAM, 64 megs or 128 megs of RAM, will make it so you can do most of the things I'm going to show you today. And you can still buy these cards. If you've got an Amiga 1200, you can buy uh, one of uh, Jens from Individual Computers. He's got uh, nice 68030 cards. Um, I think they run 33 megahertz, and he's got one that's 40 megahertz, a couple hundred dollars, and you can make your Amiga really fly. So first thing is getting this little guy on the web. Now, we've had web browsers for the Amiga for decades now. Uh, I think AWeb came out in the mid-90s. Uh, iBrowse has been a popular one that people have been using for a long time. Uh, getting the Amiga on the internet, especially an A600 or an A1200, is an absolute breeze. With the PCMCIA uh, card, I've got an Ethernet card. This just uses a 10 base T Ethernet connection. You can still buy those brand new today. Again, I'm going to plug our friends at Amiga Kit. They sell them. Uh, there are several other vendors that also sell the uh, Ethernet cards. You want to get your Amiga on with Wi Fi? No problem another PCMCA card uh, with Wi-Fi. Now, with the PCMCA cards, as you probably know, it won't use the 32-bit card bus cards, the newer ones, and by newer I mean like 1998 new. Uh, it will only use the older 16-bit cards, but they're still available. I think they're even still manufactured by some people, and you can get online and grab them from any of your favorite Amiga vendors. Once you get the card installed, you need a way to get it on the internet, a, a TCP IP protocol stack. In the past, we used graphics-based stacks, um, and they're not really made anymore. 
they, they're not supported anymore. But, but uh, there was, uh, help me out here. What was the name of the, the popular stacks from the old days? Miami. Miami, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Termite TCP, Genesis. Yeah, those were all that were good in the day, but you had to launch your, start your Amiga, and then generally start the graphics interface to get your Amiga on the internet. Now, there's a new one called Roadshow that is absolutely still made, still updated, and still supported today. It's all command line based, but once you put in a few commands, you download it, and you put in a few commands to tell it how to use your network, you never have to think about it again. I turn my Amiga on with my networking card, it's on the internet, just like your PC or your Mac is. It just is, and I never have to touch a thing. Works with DHCP, best way to do it. I think $25 to buy the software. Absolutely worth it to, worth it to support an active Amiga software developer. Um, Olaf Bartel? Oh, oh, Olaf Bartel, Bartel did Rocha. Okay, thank you very much. Perfect, love it. It works for both uh, OS 4 and for classic Amigas. So, support your vendors. So once you do that, what do you do about a web browser? There are a couple of them that are still sort of free out there. Like I think you can still find some copies of of a web out there. But by far iBrowse is the most powerful and has been the most powerful for a long time. They've had a bit of a, an, an upgrade issue and an update issue with, with iBrowse, and that is they announced iBrowse 2.5 update, I think back around the time of the Civil War, <laughs> and they just released it about two months ago. It's it seriously been like a 10, 12, 14 year waiting process. Where, where they'd say, yes, it's coming, it's coming, yep, we got a demo. Finally, they released it, and it's really not too bad. It's, now this is on a 68,000 based Amiga. This is trying to access modern websites, so it's not perfect, but it absolutely does work. It uses SSL. There's um, Amy SSL, which is a, a very commonly updated piece of software that adds SSL certificates and security and it works just fine. So for example, I've got Amiga.org. I'm sure probably three-fourths of you have an account right on here on Amiga.org and it actually comes up with a website just fine. I've got this in a 256 color mode, perfectly usable. The ads pop up okay. Hey look at this. Amy West 2019 high definition videos. Pop into any of these topics and they work just beautifully. So really, not half bad. Now you're not going to be getting on the latest CNN pages and, and scrolling around. You're not going to be going to YouTube and watching videos on this. But for the things you need the internet for, like uh, downloading files, like going on to your, your, your favorite forums, it works pretty good. You can actually get away with it. Let's go to a very popular one here. AmyNet. I think we've probably all used AmyNet one or two times over the years, and it actually works beautifully in here, both for browsing through AmyNet's files and for downloading the software you can, it, the download speeds on my card, perfectly fine. I can download a couple megabyte file in just, you know, minute or so. Perfectly acceptable speeds. And you see AmyNet comes up and it looks perfectly usable, perfectly normal. Where it fails is websites that have a lot of encryption, websites that have, uh, you know, filled with HTML5 code, it's not going to do a real great job of handling that. But it tries. It does a good job. <coughs> There's another competitor called NetSurf, which is a piece of software that's available on almost every platform out there. NetSurf you can get for just about everything. And it's uh, open source, open license software. And they do have a copy that work on 68,000 based Amigas. You really need an 040 for it. You really need 64 megs of RAM for it. 
and it kind of works sometimes. I've not had the fantastic luck with NetSurf. Sometimes it seems to work okay, but your mileage may vary. But it's nice that it's still updated. Now, one of the other cool things that we can do on the web is it works great with Gmail. Uh, if you've ever noticed, when you log into your Gmail, sometimes it'll show you, you know, on a slower link, click this. And it degrades the HTML that Gmail uses. And it comes up fine on your Amiga. I can get on my Gmail account and do anything I want to with, with Gmail email. Um, there's several email programs that will work with POP3 that I hope none of you are using anymore. But there's also one out there that's still being developed occasionally that uses IMAP, that, that uses IMAP for email, which is a, a little better technology to use your email with. Now, what else do we do? with our modern computers that we might want to do on an Amiga? Well, word processing. Now, we've all seen the cycle that Microsoft has gotten into where you know you, they want you to upgrade your word processor every year, every two years to the latest version. And they really don't add anything except for fluff and a couple million lines of code that slows things down. But typing a letter in a word processor is typing a letter in a word processor. And word processors like this nice uh, final copy here. Whoops. Let me actually make the window active. Here is a nice test at Amy West. It works just like you'd expect your normal word processor to, to work with, where you can change the font, you can change the styles, no issues at all. I mean, it's, it's really, really fast. And what more do you need? It's got a spelling checker in here, I believe. I've never really used the spelling checker in there. But all of your common features that you want in a word processor are right here. And it's available really, you, you, I, think, I think if you go over to the SACC booth, I think I saw two, three, maybe even four copies of Final Copy 2, boxed copies that you can get for a couple bucks over there works fantastic. Now, spreadsheets. We all love our spreadsheets. And again, it's something that, yes, it's changed over the years. Yes, there's new things you can do with formulas. But in general, it's keeping track of numbers and keeping track of names. And something like TurboCalc, which was supplied free with the Amiga for many, many years, works absolutely perfectly. You can, you can fill this thing up with as much data as you want, do your spreadsheets, no issues at all. Now, I'm not aware of too many modern spreadsheets or office packages that work for the 68K Amigas. And it'd be really nice to see somebody bring one of the, uh, the, the open source ones over, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But in the meantime, we can use what we have available, and it works just fine. Now, music on the Amiga. Your regular Amiga 500 with its 7 megahertz 68,000 processor is going to choke on an MP3 file. Just trying to decode it, it's not going to happen, okay? A regular Amiga will play mod files just beautifully, and there are literally tens of thousands of absolutely beautiful mod files that you can download for free on the internet and play all you want to. There's still competitions every year where people create mod files, they submit them to competitions, and, and you can do some beautiful things. Now, if you have a faster Amiga like mine, an 040 Amiga, it'll uh, decompress MP3 files without any big problem at all. So in this case, I've got uh, Song Player 1.62. You're able to configure Song Player pretty nicely. You can tell it to decrease the quality of the audio in order for it to play back on a slower Amiga. So if you have a, a slower 030 with maybe not as much memory, you can reduce the quality. Still perfectly good. In this case, I don't have to change the quality at all. Let's get a little song playing here. This one, uh, my best friend, uh, Joe Jenks, is a uh, artist. And he's uh, very heavy into the blues scene, won, won lots and lots of awards. This is a song he wrote uh, 
Oh, probably about 20 years ago. It was by the name of Douglas. He wrote it about me. It was kind of nice. Is it actually playing back? Because when we texted it, it played back perfect. We wouldn't want it to, you know, play back perfect during the presentation. I'm going to get you a sign that says Guru Meditation. <laughs> That was thoroughly embarrassing because that was just playing beautifully 10 minutes ago. But it does handle MP3 files just fine. Uh, matter of fact, Amiga OS 3.9, when that came out ooh, almost 20 years ago now, had a really nice MP3 player in it too that you were able to load skins on, and it, it, and it did a really nice job. Now, multitasking while it's playing an MP3 file, yeah, you can you know write a letter or something like that, but you're going to feel a bit of a performance hit on your Amiga when you're playing MP3 files. So it's more something you want to do in the background. So we'll close that one down. Now, as far as graphics, the Amiga still does an absolutely fantastic job in the graphics department. And yesterday during my presentation, you saw what a lot of people have done with Amiga graphics. Um, but an AJ Amiga with its 256 colors or up to 262,000 colors, you can still use it for graphics editing. It, it, it works just great. And if you get a program like Ad Pro um, or Image Effects, which you can still find copies of it floating around there to purchase, it will keep and manipulate those images in full 24-bit color. Even though your Amiga may only dis be displaying things in 256 color, internally, everything is full 24-bit. So let's, let's bring up a nice image here so you can See, I'm not lying when I say this thing does a nice job. Not, um, pictures. Let's see how this one looks. This may take a second to load in. Um, this happens to be personal paint. This is a program uh, that's currently owned and, and uh, sold by some company, uh, Aeon, something like that. Maybe you've heard of them before. And uh, it was once owned by another company, uh, Cloanto, I think was the name of the company that used to own it. So uh, maybe you'll hear something about those, those uh, various people. Personal Paint, I actually did a review on. Uh, I, I teamed up with Pixel Vixen again and did a review on the software a couple months ago. It's pretty good software. It's still updated uh, today. It's still usable today. You can purchase it for about 20 bucks from places like uh, Amiga Kit or uh, Amiga on the Lake or directly from Aeon. Uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the picture that I wanted to show you. The high quality <laughs> graphics the Amiga can support. You see the animation of the, the flashing characters? Absolutely. <laughs> that was perfect timing. I love it. That, that was fantastic. But uh, so purchasing new software like Personal Paint, purchasing new software like Roadshow, like I mentioned before, not only gives support to the people in the Amiga community who are still putting their blood, sweat, and tears into our aging platform, but it also proves that there's still life left in this little beast. Now, before I go, I want to talk about the future of the classic Amiga a little bit. Um, absolutely, I recommend you go out and get one of the Tabor boards and Amiga OS 4.1. It's fantastic. But if you're like me and you have a soft spot for the originals, but you just want to give them a little bit more love, there's some really, really nice products out there. Uh, most of you have probably heard of the Vampire before which is a card that can go into your Amiga 500 or your Amiga 600 and really give it a performance boost faster than an 060. Now, there's lots of people with lots of opinions on the Vampire, so I know some of you are probably giving me the death stare about it right now, but it is really a, a fascinating product. I recommend looking into it if you want to use your Amiga in modern times. That really helps. I guess last week, 
at uh, the other, the tiny show that they had over in Germany last week, Amiga 34, the little one, not the, not the big one like us. Um, they talked a lot about the new 060 cards that are in development and are just about ready to ship, uh, where you can get an 060 processor and put it right in your Amiga uh, 1200. And I think they even talked about those for the Amiga 500 too. And, and just the fact that they're still manufacturing these products, they can give our aging hardware a new lease on life and give us more opportunities to continue using it over the years is just fascinating. Now, in my own personal life, I obviously host a podcast dedicated to the Amiga, so I would be silly if I didn't try and use my Amigas as much as possible in my, in my uh, YouTube channel. What I use mine for is I would say about 90% of my scripts are written right on an Amiga. I've got Amigas all over my house, so I'll write part of the script on my Amiga 1200, move over in my office, work on either my Amiga 4000, and then uh, export it, bring it over to Windows, print it out, or sometimes even just print it from the Amiga. It works just fine. I also use my Amigas for editing my graphics, like my, my logo that you see, my, my 10 mark logo. I should have brought it up here. Uh, probably guru again if I tried to bring it up. But my Boing Ball with my logo in it with a, the, the rainbow font, that was done 100% on an Amiga. I used uh, TV Paint, which is a great retargetable graphics paint program that supports 24-bit color. Uh, I brought the images in, I brought everything together, edited it, changed the size, 100% on an Amiga. My main thumbnail picture that I use, which is the Amiga 500 in beige with my 10 mark logo on it, 10 minute Amiga retrocast across it, about 70 to 80 percent done on an Amiga. It was only the actual uh, fonts that I used in Adobe program to get the fonts on there because I liked the style of the font. So I brought it in there, put the fonts on there, brought it back over to the Amiga, finished up all the finishing touches on the image. So I try to use it as much as possible. On my Amiga 4000, I have a, an AD516 audio card, which is a fantastic 16-bit audio card, multiple channels on it. Uh, you can record into it, play it back. It works beautifully, much better than the stuttering audio I just got here a few minutes ago. Um, but I use that for voiceover work. When I do a, sometimes I'll do a, re a review of a product, and then I'll have a voiceover as you're watching the video. As much as I can, I do all my voiceover work right on my Amiga. I'll have my computer screen up, I'm watching the video, and I just record right to my Amiga 4000, export that as a 16-bit audio file, bring it into my PC, and dump it right into uh, uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is what I use for uh, post-processing. I, I can't process my videos on the Amigas anymore, unfortunately. Now, I do have an, a video toaster, and I do have it set up over there, and I'm hoping to have it up and running so I can show it off a little bit in a bit. But I do intend on using that more in my videos in the future. There are certain things that the toaster can do that are just amazing, and I want to be able to take some of the video work I do and use the toaster to process it and record it right onto a, um, into an MP4 file. And uh, I think it's fun. I love using my classic Amigas. I use a PC because I have to use a PC. I use a PC because I make a living selling PCs and repairing PCs and supporting PCs, so I better know what I'm doing with them. But when I want to just sit down and have fun and enjoy myself and do something creative, I open up my Amiga and use it for that. And uh, I think, I think the, the classic line still has a lot of life left in it. Uh, any questions or, or any comments on maybe how you use the Amiga in the real world, whether it's a classic or maybe one? Any great stories about that? On the new Zero uh, Sixties coming out, do you know who the manufacturer is going to be? I can, uh, for the new O Sixties that are coming out, um, yes, we can look up and who the manufacturers are, and maybe we can put a link in the chat so the people in the live stream can see the link in the chat. Um, but yes, I think they're going to be out in the next couple of months. Uh,
So if you have a question, ask for Mike. Now somebody's got it. <laughs> Anybody. Oh. Um, I have a question that someone in the live chat also had, which is what version of the OS are you using on your 1200 here? That is an excellent choice. An excellent question. I use Amiga OS 3.1.4 on almost all of my Amigas. I, I really appreciate uh, the people that have put forth the effort to update the software and, uh, and make it more usable today. The fact that I can now use the full capacity of a 64 gig uh, compact flash card is wonderful. I know we've been able to cludgingly do it over the years, but just being have that having that now built right into Kickstart is wonderful. So 3.1.4. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody? One thing that I th that I'm actually been uh, influenced by some friends that I have in the audience here from uh, Pixel Gaiden. We have Cody and Eric here from Pixel Gaiden. And in their podcast, which I recommend you listen to, they do a lot of uh, soundboard stuff where they'll do sound effects, they'll hit a key, and uh, they'll play back a sound effect, and it, it adds something clever to their podcast. And every time I do that, I think, you know what? I could do that on my Amiga. That wouldn't be that hard to set that up where... I can use it as a, a as a soundboard while I'm doing it. Now, I'm not going to have the same sound effects they use, but particular things that could enhance uh, the podcast, I could easily use an Amiga to play back things like that. Anyone else? Well, okay then. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe to my channel, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. <laughs>